So the notion of a U.S. war on terrorism is simply a fraud. There is no war on terrorism. The Anglo-Americans are backing terrorists exactly when and where it suits them, from Chechenia to, to Cuba to other points around the world. This is a typical British strategy. You've got to know the name of Brigadier General Sir Frank Kitson. He was the British operations officer in Kenya at the time of the Mau Mau. And what, what Kitson saw, which has been known to commanders for, for centuries, millennia, if you've got an underground nationalist organization and you want to discredit them, you create your own parallel underground nationalist organization. You send them out. It's got to have the same name. It's got to have a false flag. You send them out, have it commit tremendous atrocities. Those will be blamed on the original relatively benign group and they'll be discredited, they'll be demonized, and you gain political advantage. He wrote a book about it called Low Intensity Operations. And these, the technique is called the technique of the counter gang or the pseudo gang. Just as Al Qaeda, in the broader sense, is a pseudo gang or counter gang created by US and British and Israeli intelligence. It's a counter gang against normal Arab nationalists or anybody with any positive agenda for reform or independence or development anywhere in the Arab world. They can always be labeled Al-Qaeda. The, the, the reductio ad absurdum of this is President Chavez of Venezuela, after giving Bush a hard time at various conferences and doing things to undermine the dollar, the neocons are now accusing President Chavez of being a member of Al-Qaeda. So you can see how easy it is to demonize somebody once you've got a good counter gang going. There's an oligarchical consensus in the United States inspired by the neocons, inspired by Samuel Huntington and the rest of them, which is that without an enemy image, you cannot have an oligarchical society. Ultimately, that's the why, because if you look at this, you say terrorism, endless war, why, who benefits? Those who benefit are the beneficiaries of the current system, financiers primarily. Uh, they feel that without the diversion of a war, they cannot maintain social relations, property relations, in the current form, and this they are determined to do. So they have manufactured, in a complete hysteria, a, com a largely fictitious external enemy. You remember 1984 by George Orwell. Julia at one point says, I don't even think there is a war. It's just a fake to keep people under control. Orwell, I think, had a very good understanding of some of these psychological uh, mechanisms. When you see Bush defend his Iraq policy, you will see that he does not use Iraq arguments in terms of closing the deal. When it comes to the heart of the matter, he uses 9-11 arguments. If, if he's asked, why did 2,000 people have to die in Iraq for no reason? The answer is 9-11, the lessons of 9-11, I know it's hard, but these are the lessons of 9-11. With that kind of demagogy, he's able to keep a hard core of 30 to 35 percent of the American public. With 30 to 35 percent, he will be able to stay in office and wage war indefinitely. He'll be able to go for a wider war. He can manufacture new 9-11s to firm up that base. He and Cheney can provoke incidents that will lead to war with Iran, with Syria, with Venezuela, with North Korea. There's no limit to this. It, it, uh, it has no, no bounds. The only way to begin to attrit and to erode and to break up his 30 to 35 percent base is to begin dismantling the myth of, of September 11th.